no matter what year you're farming in, there's always a new challenge. Over the last five years or so, we've had weather extremes and input extremes with the fertiliser cost going up. And the only way to be really prepared for those challenges is to have an efficient business and use your inputs efficiently, whether that be fertiliser or water. It is about a balance between the productivity of, of a dairy business that needs to be profitable at the end of the day, but we've also got to give back in those environmental assets like the lagoons and creeks and places where, where nature can thrive. My name is Will Russell and we're on the farm Gelgari, which is a dairy farm in Jilla Jilla. It's very close to Bega, New South Wales. We milked 350 cows. It's around about 130 hectares milking platform and we irrigate about 111 of those hectares. And we grow a range of different pastures and crops underneath that irrigation. We do maize corn, a little bit of lucerne. Right now we're seeding all our ryegrass and oats and clover and chicory into our grazing paddocks. And yeah, we'll use that irrigation year round if we need it. The farm we're on today is part of the Clean Coastal Catchments Project. It's funded through the Morena State Management Strategy, as well as through local land services and Department of Primary Industries. The aim of the project is to help farmers in coastal catchment areas to improve productivity, profitability and sustainability while also achieving good water quality, which also protects waterways and the broader Morena State. So we were really keen to get involved in this program from sort of all different angles, whether that be environmental or the economic realities of, of spreading fur over our farm. We wanted to make sure that the program that we were on with our fertiliser use was the most efficient. We were a little bit worried that were we using fertiliser we didn't have to, and if we were, was that creating a runoff into our natural environment that could have been avoided? And also, is there any opportunity to use less or more fertiliser in, in places to get a better productivity return from our pastures and our crops? Will in the management of this farm really follows best practice methods. So that involves having a plan which looks at inefficiencies and problems and then adopts techniques or technology to address those. So here we have the irrigation system which has been upgraded to be more efficient. With our irrigation, it's, it's always about using the water that you have more efficiently. So whether that's by a few of the upgrades we've been doing to our irrigation systems. So it's about choosing your irrigation infrastructure for the soil that you have underneath it and the types of crops you want to grow underneath it. So yeah, what we've got here is our new sprinkler system. We needed to increase our uniformity across the whole centre pivot and by putting these new orbiters on, we increased our uniformity by about 10%, which was, is really helpful. We um, increased our area of efficient irrigation by about two or three hectares. Yeah, m a money saving, but yeah, also just a productivity gain in growing more feed for the, for the dairy cows. Part of the project involved a trial being set up which tested nitrogen-based fertilisers in different applications, which also showed response for dry matter yield and feed quality. The trial aimed to show what was the best combination of fertiliser to allow for productivity, profitability and not spending too much and over applying and then losing that through the paddock. That was done with support through Department of Primary Industries and Local Land Services. The aim of the trial at Jilla was to demonstrate the benefits of soil testing in maximising pasture yields and also reducing losses of nitrogen into nearby waterways. Secondary aim was to work out which specific nutrients were limiting dry matter yield in the pasture. So for example, in Jilla, it was phosphorus, potassium and sulphur. Therefore, adding more nitrogen in post-grazing top-ups was going to be a potential waste of time and money and a risk to water quality. In terms of the results of the trial, there was no significant difference between the nitrogen forms used in terms of dry matter yield, metabolizable energy or crude protein. The take home message from the trial was that if you followed a basic program of applying one unit or one kilogram of nitrogen per hectare per day on a 30 day grazing period, you were going to produce acceptable yields and also avoid any potential impacts to local water quality. So through the trial, 
it's pretty clear to us that there's a few things we need to focus on. One of them being soil tests. So if we're going to put around a fertiliser on, we really need to know what those paddocks are lacking in. And so we've sort of set up a, a, a two yearly FertSmart plan on the farm to not test every paddock, but test every area that has different soil types and whether we're getting the general rates right. We found that by using the 80 kilos of urea rather than a higher amount of 100 or 150 that is a practice on some farms, we found that all that 80 kilos was getting used on farm and there was no chance of it being lost to the environment or further down the landscape. So ha having that data through the soil tests sort of shows us that we are on the right track with balancing productivity and the environment. If we can start to accrue a, a bank of soil tests over time that sort of tells us a story of what that paddock is doing, then it sort of proves to us that, yeah, we are on the right track. We're not over fertilising nor under fertilising. As well as managing the, the farm requirements for productivity, the natural assets are also important to consider, uh, such as uh, fencing creeks from cattle as well as planting trees which have, offer shade and shelter and have an ecosystem service in the overall health of the farm. As well as the fertiliser and irrigation inputs we're trying to manage, uh, we have also done a lot of planting over the years uh, through my, my parents' time. A lot of planting of waterways, fencing out environmental assets like creeks and areas prone to erosion. But also in that we're trying to have better grazing management so we we don't have bare paddocks at, at any time of year where it's m most vulnerable. So through perennial pastures like Kaikyu, we can hold our paddocks together without having erosion issues. The way I look at our farm is there's area that we use to be a productive dairy business, and there's equally area that we use that we have to protect for the environment. But also we really need to be as efficient as possible with our water management and fertilizer management to make sure we're growing efficient pastures and efficient crops, that we can run a really profitable dairy business. So you've just got to be as prepared as you can be because the community needs both things. It's really exciting to see how Will has uh, changed his practices and improved this farm. It's, it's a pleasure to be on. It's, it's a nice environment. You've got happy, healthy cattle, happy, healthy farmers, and a nice setting to be in. You know, it's a beautiful spot to live. As part of this project, we had a field day to share the results of the nitrogen trial with landholders and get landholders uh, talking about best ways to manage fertiliser. If you're a landholder who would like to be involved in field days, trial sites or do works on your property, come and have a chat with local land services. We can talk through the options, do a site visit and draw up a plan which helps you to improve some efficiencies in productivity but also have environmental outcomes.